Hail, hail, and welcome to the 33rd edition of the Tent We Stand podcast, and we are a Hail, hail Media production. Well, we're back. It's a new year, but it's the same old voices. Marty welcomed myself and Johnny back onto the stand, and we have a belated look at the half point of the season. We then have a wee brief talk about Juventus before finishing off with an ill-educated debate about the proposed new look for Scottish football. We hope you enjoy this effort, so nothing left but see you on the other side. Hello, good evening and welcome to tonight's Temporary Stand podcast number 33. And tonight in a snowbound Glasgow, I think I've got Johnny there. Hello, Johnny. How are you doing? And on gorgeous campus leg, I've got Scotty Boy. How are you, Scott? I'm no bad, mate. How's yourself? Not too bad at all. Happy New Year to all our listeners. So it's been a wee while since we pulled together. Um, we had a fleeting um, appearance on the Homeboys over over the Christmas period, but um, we're hopefully getting back on track here over the next couple of weeks, um, getting podcasts out a bit more regularly. So we just wanted to pull the guys that the, the, uh, together tonight just to get a wee bit of a chat over, I suppose, having to look back um, over the last couple of months very briefly and then looking at some of the issues that are they're surfacing at the minute and... In the world of Timdom, for want of a better phrase. So, Scotty, a bit of a half term report. Give us your highlights over the last couple of months. Is there anything that stuck out or um, that was being particularly good for you? Over the past couple of months or all, all the half season? Over the half season so far. Uh, not just, we, not we, just recently. Uh, you've obviously you've got to fling up the European games. European games have been the, the massive standout. Um, I didn't think the Celtic fans we really gave ourselves much. I don't know. I think we wrote ourselves off a wee bit early. Um, certainly Marcel and yourself had different views about how we should be looking at Europe and stuff. Um, so so Europe, Europe's a standard. Europe's on a different level to end with kind of, I mean, that Barcelona game itself. And then to, to, to win against Spartak when all the pressure was on us. Um, it, it, it certainly showed we've, we've came as a team and Neil Lennon's grown as a manager um, nothing's been perfect I mean, you're loath to criticise anything but I dare say we will um, but Europe, Europe's a standout by, by, a, by a total stretch there's fleeting games there's fleeting games this season in the league and in the cups that have stood out and have been good and stuff, but the European games have been been outstanding, to be perfectly honest. And anything uh, a sort of on a, on a negative uh, tip or vibe that you think I wish that hadn't happened, or you know we should have really seen that coming, or is there anything that, that uh, uh, negatively you'd like to see improved? Well, there's nothing. There's nothing really critical. There's nothing that's um, that you could get so, so upset about. As you have in the past. I mean, you guys have known me. Yeah, I'm off one to kind of overreact to things and to an extent. But this season, there's nothing. To, we can be critical of the, the 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 league form or the home league form to an extent because I'm sure. Well, I'm sure we'll touch on it. And I was listening to the TikTok this week from, from last week. Sorry, and these these guys are doing we're doing the same thing as we're doing the new and. And you're loath to to be too critical because people pounce on you and you, you might sound ungrateful. But to be perfectly honest, we have been taking the foot off the pedal. Understandably so in some extents, not understandably so. So I don't know, I just seen I just seen this as a chance for the club to to batter in. I mean this would last year um, what what ever made the Lisbon Lions and, and Barcelona the current one great is because he went and won everything and I felt last season we had a great chance to go and win everything and see this season we're in every competition so it could still happen I would like to see us why put the league it just just well, that's just me that's just greedy I suppose so that would be my only critique I suppose is that we haven't really went gung ho and and I suppose what we'll, we're expecting the young the younger guys Guys like Dylan McGee and all that, and and, and the the centre half was uh, Marcus Fraser. These guys to come in and be essential parts of the team. But I'm sure that will happen over the, the the course of the season and next season. Fair enough, Johnny. Yourself, your high points. Uh, well, it is this season is all about Europe. You know, the league forms kind of separate, but we're just happy that progress has been made in Europe. The Spartak away game, maybe a highlight for me because. That's a monkey off our back. 
I mean, I don't know if you've read the press packs before the games. I'm pretty certain I give you them, John. They're <laughs> 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 provided by Scott for a day, John. Go no, ahead, yeah, I, don't, I don't pay any attention who sends them. <laughs> <laughs> but it gives you all sorts of stats for both of the teams. And I used to say uh, best home win, it was, for us it's 3-0 twice against Benfica. Then it says best away win, and besides Celtic it had not applicable. So now everybody all of Europe that's reading their press packs so will see that we beat somebody away from home. Mm. So that's kind of good that that's changed. Uh, just Tony Watts scoring that goal against Barcelona when time seemed to stop. That's obviously that'll be the highlight everybody's season, I'd, I'd imagine. Uh, a kind of disappointing thing for me, the home form aside, was getting beat at Easter Road because this is Europe's finished between had finished a few weeks before that. And it's finished up until February, so this is when we should be getting the the lead and the league built up. And so to go away and get beaten in Easter Road when you've not got the distraction of Europe, was I found a bit annoying. Fair enough. Um, you know, it's a fair point. Is anybody overly concerned about the league? You know, uh, you know, is it going to be a case of coming back with a stutter maybe off the the winter break, or is it just going to be business as usual once um, once the club returns, Ali? No, because. No, we'll end up winning about 20 odd points because some of these teams might take points off us now and again, but they're all just beating each other, aren't they? So mm. none of them's going to put a consistent run of form together. Aberdeen looked as though they were going to do it for a point and they didn't. So, But nobody's going to put a decent run together, so we'll, we'll run away with it. But Scott says if, if if we get put out of Europe, then they, they must have been the treble, which should be nice after having a good time in Europe going the treble. Domestically would be spot on. Mm. And Scotty, just to, uh, to pick up on Jelly's point there about the, the 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 breadth of the league, you know, when we do return to action in in a couple of weeks' time, you know, we're sort of sitting nine points clear already, and we're reflecting on what we regard as a pretty bad season in terms of some of our domestic results. So, what's your question? Well, it's, I'm just asking your thoughts on on. What happens when they come back? Is, are we going to steamroll people, or you know, with new signings, or is, will it be more of the same, where we're sort of stuttering, stuttering league form, league form continues, but we still manage to scrape away? Well, right, you've got to go in one hand, right? I'm, I'm going to be contradicting myself here, right? On one hand, I to- as, as Celtic supporters, we're all gearing up for the twelfth of February, aren't we? Really. Um, we've got all these games in between. We've got a, a semi-final. We've got a Scottish Cup. We've got uh, I think three home games and a cup uh, and an away game before before we before we hit that. But we're all thinking about it. And Celtic's made up. Celtic team's made up of a load of young guys. And you, you damn you're damn sure that's what they're looking at. And and I say when we get to Inverness and all that, I think guys guys will be. I don't know, are they less likely to put in 100% just in case injury? Is it a case of day that the bare minimum to get across the line till we get to that Juventus game? So, you, so on one hand, you can understand that, that that's the aim and it will be more of the same. But then you flip on the other hand and go, these guys are getting paid for this. And I don't, I really don't mean to be to look a gift, a gift horse in, uh, in the mouth and stuff like that, but these guys are getting paid. To, to go out there and do their best and win the games. I mean, the Hearts game and then we've got Dundee United game coming up, mm-hmm. and and it, the bathroom at home. And you really think we should be going out there and gain it? Ephraim, we've got the the boy Gershon will come in, and he he's obviously going to be he's going to um, fling himself right into. It. He's he's going to try and get his spot back, you're hoping guys like Ronnie are going to come in and, and see that Ambrose is missing, that there's a chance for him to play against Juventus. I know uh, Ronnie is getting a hell of a lot of criticism for the Hibs game recently, but mm. but uh, in my opinion, injuries aside, Donald Ronnie showed enough to me that this boy has got a future in football. I think people have been very, very critical of Thomas Ronnie for recent performances. I mean, look at what we thought about Kelvin Wilson last season. We did, we'd have gave Kelvin Wilson away, and now you're, now you're talking about Kelvin Wilson. If Kelvin Wilson said the more I wanted to leave, you're asking for a million pound at least, didn't you? Mm. Um, I, I, I really don't know how they're going to come. As I say, if we come out 
and we, it, it's just the same old part. I wouldn't be surprised. However, I would like them to come out with a renewed energy, prepared to Boston to play for the the places against Juventus. Do you know what I mean? If that mm-hmm. makes sense. Well, I think that's what, would, that's what would happen. You know, think because we have got quite a big squad, and you've got Gershon coming in. You've maybe got Agudelo or this Australian boy coming in. Like, who knows if they're going to be getting a first team place? But there's we've got quite a big squad. Most of these guys are capable of playing in the starting eleven. So, but John, I'd like to think that they will be putting in the effort. Sorry, to get interrupt the you, Johnny. But do do you know? Do you not get a feeling that Neil Lennon has a team in mind for Europe? And if they guys are fit, I mean, he, he basically said that as much when it if Gary Hooper's fit, he plays. Um, the, mid, the midfield is more what I'm thinking of. Yeah, no, but Victor, Victor Wanyama is fit, Victor Wanyama plays. True. Right? Yeah, but he's the only one in the midfield. If Samaras fit, he plays. So, so as much as I, I know what you're saying and I do agree with what you're saying, I still think if Neil Lennon, even if these guys go out and have great games, if Tony Watt scores in every game, Two goals in every game right up. I still think he starts with Gary Hooper against Juventus. No? Well, like, but that, that just still means that the business is getting done in the league. We're still winning, but as long as... But I think you thought the point you're making was that we would maybe no get the results in the league building up to the UV game. Mm. So it doesn't matter who's doing it, as long as the team's collectively getting the wins. Oh, of course, of course, no. of course, of course. But I just, well, John, yeah. So I agree with you that you has got a team in mind. But if well, somebody's just, really just to, one, then I'd like to think he would drop them. Well, this is a, look, Wilson's going to be out for two games anyway, so there's going to be an Ambrose as away. So there has to be some sort of surgery done on the back line. But the four games, Johnny, are Celtic at home to Hearts, Celtic at home to Dundee United, away to St Mirren on the 27th, and then a midweek game um, against Kilmarnock at home as well. Are there any surprises in there for us? You know, Is there, is there anything we need to be worried about? Can Lennon play around with new players and, and test things before the event this game? Or will he just stick with his tried and tested? What do you think? I don't know the fact that three or four games are at home, would you think that maybe something will happen? Because it's happened three or four times already this season. But, uh, I fully expect the uh, Gershon guy to come straight into the team with Wilson out for two games and Ambrose away and Rogney will play. But I'm one of the people that's been critical of Rogney and maybe more so for the fact that he's made a chocolate and he's knocked back a new contract. Yeah. And that's why he stopped getting again in the first place. Mm. Oh, no, I so agree. This is, this, and he was rotten against Hibs as well. He kind of caused a go, although I'm left to believe that Griffiths was offside. But I thought Rogan had a bit of a nightmare. So he's got a chance to be ready to it, to come in and do the business and make us realise that he has got it. Because as far as I'm concerned, they'll be at the door in the summer unless he puts in some good performances. To go back a bit, Marty, there's a frustrating yeah. thing. Johnny's just picked up a point. I, I generally, Tony Watt aside, I don't think many guys for outside the squad have come in and took their chances when they've, when they've been thrown at them. Mm. Kelvin I Wilson, mean, I think, is the only one that you can say. Yeah, I, I don't... I mean, this was, he was given another chance and he took it. Yeah, this was the season that we were expecting guys, to, uh, the young guys, to, to, to see their chance and come in and take their jersey. But was it the Kilmarnock game where Neil Lennon flung a hell of a load of young guys in and we could beat 2 nothing? Two bad mistakes, incidentally, on the, on the day. But th- this was this was the season that you were expecting that all the young guys at Twards... I mean, Twards had come in and he was steady without ever being... I mean, ultimately, as I said earlier on, he's never going to take Wanyama's place. Nobody's going to take Wanyama's place. And, it, and even guys like Kyle, Kyle had a chance there to cement his jersey and while he had some really good performances he still had some pretty poor performances in there as well he never put a consistent run that said yep if we if ultimately we do sell Kyle eh uh, Wanyama Kyle's your centre mid yeah do you know what I mean and, and, but he, again to go back to what Johnny was saying he's another player that, that has been labouring with injuries you know and, and has never shoot him off long enough really to, to stamp his authority on the on the team. You know, and I was a, a fan of Kyle when he arrived, but it's so frustrating. When you see a player like him and the same with Thomas Rugg now, I would be a fan of his too. I made no made no mistake about it. But 
you know, so annoying. Every you know, you see, the they're you never there. Like, exactly. Yeah. There's no. We've had that talk before. Mm-hmm. There's no point in, in holding on to him if, if he, if he, um, you know, if he's not going to be contributing. But Johnny, it's a very strange thing too with a, a player like Rogney who's had so many injury problems. They actually knock back a contract or the stall on a contract. What do you think of that? Don't know. Well, we don't know the terms of the contract. Maybe he got offered the same terms. Maybe he's been told by his agent he can get X amount at these other clubs. You know, do you so think he would? Do you, do you think there would be any suitors out there for him? Apparently, uh, Stockholm. I heard were interested in him. I read that somewhere, but I don't even know what the likes of Rogni would be on it is. But I think it's a bit cheeky. I'm knocking back the contract after being injured so much. If he's a football player, God, we've seen, well, aye, we've seen exactly. bigger cheeky people well, than that. I mean, exactly. well, he is a football player, Scott, but that's a big gamble. You know, if you have if you have had such a bad injury record and you're you're knocking back a contract, you run the risk of leaving yourself contract less. You know, it's, it's very very strange. I just hope for his sake that he's getting the best advice that he can because I'm not sure, I'm not sure he is. But Johnny, from his pick you up point with, of view, he's he's seen all these other guys getting the contract and he's like, he's some of that. I want well, some of maybe. that. Yeah, you're like, you know, well, you've not really done as much as these guys have done, so shut up. Yeah, and he's a good player. There's no question. He has he has ability somewhere, but as Scott said, the most recent memory, you know, you're only as good as your last game and all of that. And, uh, you know, the, the, the lingering t- bad taste uh, about the goal that, that Lee Griffith scored doesn't want to do him any good. But I wanted to come back to you, Johnny, about picking, up, picking you up on Gershon and coming straight into the squad. Myself and Scott spoke about this last week when we were saying... These players are coming in with absolutely no expectation because I went and had a look at, at, at Gershon's record. And I'll tell you what, for a 24-year-old player, it's completely it's completely unremarkable. You know, he was at standard Liège for a couple of games, nine or ten games, and then they got rid of him. They sent him out in loan again to court trick or something where he played sort of 40 matches. But um, what I, I suppose what I want to ask is, is there anything that you've heard about him that you think, well, ah, you know, he's the type of player we need to be going for? Or is he just a punt in the dark? Let's see how he's doing. Slip him in somewhere and, and see how he gets on. Don't know. Though I've got two chains of thought on it. One that uh, he won't be just a shot in the dark because we've got a quite an extensive scouting network. You can only do a lot of uh, research into these guys. But two, you've got this agent who seems to be getting us quite a few players who may have talked the guy up. But I don't know. Just, just reading, I think the guy he sounds like he'll come in and he seems to have a positive attitude. He seems to be. Uh, arrogance is not the right word it seems to be quite confident the same way Ambrose was coming in so I've just got a feeling that he'll come in and he'll, he'll slot in the same kind of way that Ambrose did well what I had quite kind of worried about I suppose was that he would be this season's Brozac you know he's only on he's only on loan and I suppose there's no real risk taking him but it seems to me to be a pretty unremarkable player well that, the strange bit is the loan and we've not just took him like full bifter permanently but I don't know we'll just have to wait and see but i my gut feeling is that he'll be decent. Okay, well, it's I don't, I don't know where that gut feeling comes from. I just get a no, feeling t- that he'll be good. Time will tell. We asked the question. We asked the question a few or oh, they've been fucking ages ago, do because I don't think we've done a pod. But we asked the question: What would we be wanting to come in? You know, and I, and and I was and I said that to be honest, if Celtic never went mental and spent big money on a Bangura and, and kind of get bit in the ass. I, w- I wouldn't be upset for us not to get somebody. So we've got this guy in, but I mean, he, he's basically come in at his cover, as far as I'm concerned. If he turns out to be better than better than average, then maybe we've cracked it. I mean, is there a, a agreed fee for him? Should it should be good? I think there is. Yep, I think there is, and he's coming from. Um, well, he's coming from standard standard, but he hadn't been playing for him as yeah. I said. He was out for yeah, the season yeah, now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but I think the team he went to was um, a top division team anyway. So, so he's he's played in the Belgian league. Do you know what I mean? He's played he's played at, uh, at a decent level, probably equal level, if not better than the SPL. I I I, I don't see what's right. I mean, my great hope is Ambrose is back for um, the Juventus game. You're hoping you really are for fingers crossed, hoping that uh, Nigeria take a, a quick swan dive, aren't you? Well, just just for. A wee bit of fact show. Nigeria is in Group C with Zambia, Burkina Faso, and Ethiopia. So, as much as Nigeria haven't been good over the past few years, they, they missed out in the last African Nations. The um, they'll be, expe- they'll be expected to get through that. However, and they're going to get pumped because 
they didn't pick me up. So if if they know. come first or second in that group, <laughs> they get first or second in Group D. And Group D is the Ivory Coast, Tunisia, Algeria and Togo, which are all pretty decent teams. Mm. So I okay. dare say, we're kind of hoping they get knocked out. The, the knockout phase is on the 2nd and 3rd of February. So by then we would kind of hope Nigeria would be out in their asses. Mm. And we're, we're all hoping and praying that he doesn't go back with malaria. Aye. Well, I remember what happened with Bali. He, went to the, he was never the same player, no, as far as I'm concerned. Oliver Tebele, remember that? Now what happened to him? Oliver Tebele went and um, because they were rotten, they get put up in a a camp for their own protection because the people wanted to beat them up. It's <laughs> <laughs> a funny, funny place. But yeah, I'm just looking up here um, to go back on Gershon then, it, the, uh, it's a six month old deal initially but they've already agreed an option of a three year contract. So you would you would imagine that, that Lennon will want to see plenty of them you know, to, to, to see whether or not the, the contract is worth, worth pursuing. Wouldn't you, Scott? Mm-hmm. Definitely, aye. Okay. He's a, um, he's, a left, he's a left-sided defender, like centre half kind of thing. So he's been playing three to back in some games in the SPL. So maybe it's to give Izagir a bit more cover, natural cover, mm. left-sided kind of thing. Because we well, don't. I think it, I think don't it really is. Really, Mulgrew's not been playing yeah. left centre half, has he? No, he's been playing. He's been playing Mulgrew right uh, left wing. So I think it could help Izagir having somebody like Gershon coming in, provided that the guy's decent. Just emerging over the last couple of days as well, Celtic have now also been linked to a Nigerian, one of Effie Ambrose's teammates, a guy called Ashinawa, and he was also playing in the Israeli leagues with uh, Ashdod, which was the team that, that Ambrose came from. So I suppose what, what I want to ask you is, you know, are, are these signings that are emerging over the past wee while all about John Park's sort of intricate scouting network, or really has he just clicked with an agent and has decided to, to trial or, or, or give a, uh, a bit of a go to some players that he's recommending? I think it's probably a bit of both. You know, they've probably found this guy and they got on well with him, plus it seems maybe as a bit of an untapped market and it's working well for us. We we kind of shop in Harrods. We have to go to kind of Primark. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like with the tendencies with the Huns are going on about Harrods and Primark kind of thing, but we kind of, we kind of buy the most expensive players, so this is kind of what we have to do. Try and find gems and if they got on with this guy and he's giving them good players, then go ahead, man. Until they start selling his Banguras, then we're all right. As far as I'm Turn concerned. the tab off. Absolutely. So much to do. Um, and so there's been a couple of, I suppose we've been linked with a couple of other players as well. Rogic, the, the Australian player who I think is playing for Melbourne Victory at the minute, um, is coming for a trial. He's going to play against Stoya Bucharest on Tuesday night. But as well as that, we've also been linked with a Colombian um, striker, Agadello, who's doing the business in uh, in the States. Have any of you two seen anything of this guy? Nope. Nope. I mean, I, we, had the, we had the obligatory YouTube video where, of course, he looked fantastic, but uh, he seemed like a tidy enough player. I suppose, like all these projects, it, it's, um, it remains to be seen. Scott, um, just reflecting on the transfer policy again, we've got a lot of money in the bank. But it seems to be that they aren't that, that Celtic aren't prepared to deviate from this sort of, uh, I suppose, scratch and scratch and sniff um, type of a of a transfer policy. Do you think that's ways, or should well, we well, explain some of the cash? Well, I'm going to come back to what we've said in the past. Is it such a new Celtic have a transfer policy in mind? We are. It's it, we've sold um, key. Right. We sold McGeady, right? McGeady was a different man. McGeady wanted to go. We we had an opportunity to make big bucks on him. We sell him, right? But Key's been the first guy that we brought in, a young fella from abroad, whatever. Um, we put him in the first team. We played him in Europe. We sold him for more dough than we bought. So he was the first guy that came up as a thumbs up. As we said, the new we've got a, a pretty pretty balanced squad. A wee, wee touch here and there, maybe a wee bit improvements. More first team players rather than squad guys. Maybe, maybe that's a argu- arguably because because the team the new are, are doing a job. I think the only time that we should be worried about what we've got in the bank is when we're go- when we need to spend. And as I sit there, the new I don't think we need to spend. Ultimately, we know that Victor Wanyama's long term future is not sell it. Ultimately, we know Gary Hooper's long term future is not sell it, and maybe enough two or three of them as well. 
So see when the A guys go, I mean, we see when we're looking at the Porto to an extent, we're looking at the Porto model. And what Porto do is they buy they buy small and they sell big. And that's what we're aiming for. But when they when when I say they buy small, they they buy for four million, five million pound. That's where sell it need to sell it will need to see what they're going to because Victor Wanyama say Victor Wanyama goes next summer say Victor Wanyama goes next week we're going to need somebody to replace Victor Wanyama and we're going to need somebody of that ability to then get to make the next Victor Wanyama so ultimately we've got to to spend big I, I don't know if I'm, I'm confusing things here but we've got to actually go out and spend decent money on replacements to get decent money back because we're not going to get guys for six hundred grand every time. Because I think if, if we gamble on that, we'll, we'll lose more than we'll win. We'll get the odd the diamond in the rough and stuff. But we've got to look at if Victor Wanyama goes for ten million, taking four million of that and going getting a guy that you know in a year's time you can sell for six, you can sell for seven, and then go for there. That's my opinion. But I don't, it'll be, I don't think Celtic have done that yet. But I suppose where we're coming from on that one is more about the the priority for the squad. For example, we've been banging on about the, the, the number 10 position and we still haven't really done anything about it. So, you know, should we really be setting aside maybe five, six, seven million, even two or three million, I suppose, to, to rectify, to plug that gap and to bring in a player that has the ability to win his games? Well, they, they're gonna, we spoke about it on the the homeboys, Marty, and, and mm-hmm. I'd say that was my, that was my hope that Celtic can, could incorporate a player of that type, an expressive player, into the team. I mean, I, I was there was a free view on um, Premier Sports the other week, and I taped, I recorded. Um, it was an interview with Doctor Joe. Oh, and, yes. um So I was watching it this morning, and and it was Lubo. And and, and as I said at the time, we Martin and Neil struggled to. to incorporate Lupo fully at his team but Lupo was that good that when he came in even if he came in for 10 minutes he was making a difference um, so I, I think it would, it'll be hard for Neil Lent to do it but they, they guys knew anybody with it I dare say see Lupo the new Lupo would have cost you multi-millions with the ability that guy got so for Celtic first to find that to find it a new level would be a mighty, mighty hard thing. I don't know, like, we found Nakamura, you know, and he only cost us two, it was 2.7 million, and that's, I suppose that's what bugs me about this, you know, everybody's going on about, oh, well, this great scouting network and stuff, and you're going, well, you've had a priority area of the team that you haven't filled. You haven't found anybody, young or old, you know, a, a player coming down in life, or a player going up in life, that you've managed the, the you know, I suppose Key would have been the one that people would have thought would have been that, to me, he wasn't, you know, but, um, it's, it's annoying, you know, well, well, there's a lot of time to fix this problem. Well, you'd imagine they, they signed Ibrahim kind of long-term to turn into that number 10 guy, and clearly it's no work, so he's been punted. And Agadello and Rojic, I think these two boys are kind of number 10 style players who I've read and heard, seen about them. So they're maybe hoping to get a number 10 on the cheap because they won't go out and spend that much money. Mm. I think it's clear that they won't go out and spend... Five six million. See, talking about our transfer policy. See, to make it work, we need to sell guys when they're at their peak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because going, yeah. Hooper's going to go in the summer for a lot less than we would have got him for this summer. Just passed. Same you with Kyle. So? Ah, I think so. Because there's less time left in this contract. He'll, just, he'll only have a year. We'll, we'll not get that much for him. Really, we'll get. I'd say six million tops. Whereas if oh, we'd I'd sold him in the summer, we could have got ten. Yeah, I'd same dis- with Kyle before he get John. injured. I disagree with you wholeheartedly. No, Scott. There's only a, he'll only have a year left in his contract. I know. I, I just disagree. No way. No, I. I don't think they'll be getting anywhere near that. From I think teams will stick around two or three. They know they can get him on a free on a, on a. They can come in in January ready for him and offer offer Celtic whatever they want, and Celtic will have to take it to get any money back on him if Hooper doesn't sign his new deal. So I wouldn't think. I think you'll see Hooper signing a new deal. To be fair well, and he, he might do, but I mean, we're looking at it now. It's in the middle of January here. He's had a, a, a contract offer on the table for months, and he hasn't signed it. So, you will have wondered why, and we don't have the... You know, Peter Lawwell last week was making all the right noises about you know, 
don't want to put pressure on the lad and all this sort of stuff and being very nice and nice about it. But the point is, if he was happy enough with his contract, he'd, I think he'd have taken it by now. Well, I fling, I fling, it, back, I fling it back to you, Johnny, that if Gary Hooper, right, fair do you're saying Gary, we could have maybe go X amount for Gary Hooper last summer, even this, but Gary Hooper being in your squad, his performances have allowed Selig to go further, thus making Victor Wanyama more valuable. Mm. But when that, was on, we had this talk but recently sorry Johnny for cutting the wheel there because uh, I want you to come back on, on this a couple of months back we spoke about when Yama knocking back the contract he, and it officially came out that he said no he didn't want it and my attitude was uh, he's a fool because he's basically knocking back a pay raise it doesn't, it's not going to make any odds to the situation sure, Celt- the Celtic want to sell and they'll sell him but at the end of the day that's money that could be in when Yama's pocket that he knocked back so Johnny what's your overall view of of this activity, are you happy enough it, or is there cause for concern? I just want to say, Scott, that I want Hooper to stay. I think he's no, he, no probably, you, though, you know what I mean, but to for the club to walk the transfer policy as effectively as possible. They should be selling guys when they're at their peak value. Hmm. Whereas right. I don't think we will get it, but I'd rather Hooper stay than to sell him in January. Would be absolute madness for for him, you know? for him as well. For, for him as well because he wouldn't have the last 16 uh, Champions League to showcase right, it was, exactly J- Jason Higgins owned the, lo- uh, the home boys uh, just recently whatever it was he was talking about Paul McStay right? and, 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 and it also kind of covers John Collins as well you guys are Johnny you're a couple of years younger than Marcel and Marty but do you rem- I remember the only thing we got to cheer about back then was Paul McStay. I remember jumping out of yeah. bed when Paul McStay signed a new contract. I was oh, yeah. delighted. And when John Collins signed a contract, you were delighted. Right? Yeah. We see with hindsight, with total hindsight, he, I wish Paul McStay had went to Italy and become the player he should have been. Right? That's with total hindsight. If you, if you put me in the same situation, say like a crap, he's our only shining light, then I'd probably disagree with what I'm saying. But for, for Paul McStay, because I, I believe Paul McStay was a stunning player and he really, the world should have seen Miriam. We are sitting here the new, and we didn't want to sell um, Izaguerri. But Izaguerri came in and, sh- and shook up the place. He was stunning that first season and we didn't want to sell him. He got injured and it, uh, much would you get for as he goes, yeah. I mean, there's there's, there's arguments really? to be said. Um, as he goes, he shouldn't even be playing in the team at times. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Whereas a year ago, you you would have been first first name done. So I I agree wholeheartedly with what you're saying. And sell it, I've got to commit themselves to doing it one way or the other. If you get, I have to say, take it. I have to say, if we if we were getting the right offer here in January, I'd sell Hooper. I have to say, I really January. Would. I think that's absolute madness. Doing that really, Johnny, because you're coming up you I agree to with get balls. No, you've had this game coming up with you, which again, we were sitting in the summertime saying we've no real right to progress here, mm-hmm. we've no real right to progress against Juventus, which I know we're going to talk about shortly. But it is all about maximizing it. You could get at the minute. I, I see last year too. So, Hampton were in for, for Gary Hooper last January, and I thought it was mental that, that, that they didn't bust the bank to get Hooper. Because they it would have absolutely cast Iron. Now they went up anyway, but it would have cast Iron guaranteed their um, their their promotion. But it would have essentially pushed them into the middle tier of the of the Premiership. And look at the look, they're struggling now, you know. So to me, it was mental. They were, ten million was nothing to them, you know. They were going to make that immediately on going up, you know. So they should have been saying the law right away. Look, give us a ten million. We want them. We're going to break the bank from them paying well. You know, so I think if the the offer was right in January, I would definitely definitely let him go. But you you disagree, Johnny? I definitely disagree. It's no good for him. It's no good for us. If we if we didn't sell him in the summer, we may as well keep him till next summer and take a couple of million hit. That would the difference between now and uh, the summer coming up. But what is what's the difference going to be really? Because realistically, we think we're going to win the league no matter what. So we take Gary Hooper to the side. You know, people like Anthony Stokes are coming back into it who can guarantee you goals at, at this level. Do we? I suppose we may as well just wire into the event. This um, game at the minute, then. Do we can really I just think? See before we move on to the event. Thing, Sorry. Can I just mention this again? Uh, yeah. Like you've got Matthews and Lustig fighting like Cat and Doug over the right back position, and the two of them are absolutely flying. So mm. as a girl, since he came back from his injury, he hasn't he been as good as he was mm-hmm. before his injuries. But he's not getting any competition either. Yeah. And the other so thing maybe was getting is this guy, Sean, and, and get maybe getting this Nigerian left back in. 
is getting him competition. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, will make him and the guy to bring in, turn into Lustig and Matthews, which can only be good. Exactly, and just to reflect on what I was saying a minute ago there about you know pu- pushing for a priority position when you need it, Lennon did identify that and said, look, he didn't he didn't, put, he didn't coach it in those terms, he didn't coach it in the in the in the competition terms. He coached it in a physical he's out we're foobard because he's the only left sided um sort of fullback that we have, you know. So I suppose kudos to Lennon for actually going out and trying to bring in left sided players to do that, I suppose. But um are you okay to move on to the Fantasy Night game? Or game night Johnny, or do you wanna Aye. Is there anything else you want there? So looking for looking ahead here with what three weeks I think it's three, about three weeks to go for maybe four to go before we before this clash takes place. Um if we come out of the transfer window unscathed and everybody's fit. Johnny, does the team pick itself? Uh, for a large part kinda of does, which contradicts me saying that guys are playing for the positions earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Uh, well, and for the <laughs> Screw you, McCordy. Well, uh, for okay, for well, large parts, it does. Move. Samaras is a must-pick in Europe because the goals he's scored. Hooper is. Wanyama is. You've got to say Brown is. Uh, Wilson, Ambrose, Foster, Ezegir. Lustig just now. So it's only really the two two wingers. Or maybe Mulgrew playing in there because he's set-piece ability. <laughs> so it's really only the right-hand side of the midfield that's up mm. for grabs, and really, in my opinion, if everybody's fit. Yeah, so you've got Scott Brown hopefully in there, maybe going down the right. Oh, or would you oh, have him central? You'd have him central with uh, Mulgrew and Wanyama. So it's mm. only really the right hand side in the midfield that's up for grabs if everybody's fit in my opinion. Interesting, Scotty. That's fine as well. I can't, I can't argue with that. Fair enough. And um, Johnny, you watched you found this recently. Give us a give us a flavour. A lot of people I know don't follow Italian football, so won't have seen them. And playing, and myself included, it's it's not for me, and I'm, I'm not a fan of Juventus either. But can you just give um, for the uninitiated a rundown on, on their strengths and what you pers- perceive as their weaknesses? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know that in depth about them. Richie's probably the best guy to ask about Juventus, but I caught them half an hour against Atlanta. That was uh, two or three weeks ago, and they absolutely destroyed them. And that was in the first. That was I think it was three 0 before half time. I think they've had a couple of dodgy results recently, or maybe or not dodgy results, maybe dodgy performances. So they're going to be good, but if we can beat Barcelona, I'm pretty confident we can beat them. So I don't think Italians play as slick and fast as like the Spanish or even Benfica play. So maybe the, the Italian style might suit us a bit better. Fair enough. Scotty, any thoughts? Well, according to Twitter legend Tony Cassidy, two thumbs up to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who's Tony Cassidy? Tony, legend. Tony's a good guy. Twitter legend. Good Aye. God bless you, Tony. He's um, he watches the games and he kind of he puts links up and stuff. He there's there's three or four right. Pure low tires in the last fifteen minutes. Kakera has, has no left foot, which is strange for a fitter player. Vidal is a hothead and throws the ball away. Get right into him and get him a yellow or two. Need to man Mark Pirlo. Need to have a man on the line at 25 year free uh, 25 yard free kicks to help Fraser. Um, Vucinic is the best player, but he's been injured. There you go. Tony Kia, injured there you go. as well. We've cracked it. He's just telling us how to beat him. That's a comprehensive report. But let him go. <laughs> the next question is: Do we have? Uh, a player capable of man marking Perlo. It depends on how you're going to man mark him, right? Celtic got a lot of credit for um, not booting what Walton Barcelona up and doing the place. To be honest, is that something we should maybe look at? Well, do you put Wanyama? Do you take Wanyama out of the game and say, "Then Perlo is your boy"? So. I, I, I think Perlo would have Wanyama. Run the shot to be put. Yeah, but, honest. But, and, and, and to me, when Yama's our strongest suit, that was uh, my, yeah, that was but, the point of the question. So no, I don't think so. So is the is the way to the the the, the um, minimise Perlo is is it to mark everybody else and sort of isolate him on his own? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I think it's I think it's natural that when Yama will gravitate towards nicking the ball away from Perlo as much as he can. Like you've done against Barca. 
but Pirlo is a bit of a magician, so yeah. Well, that yeah, I mean, he's you know, Manyama did a fantastic job at Barcelona, but it strikes me that Pirlo would have that wee bit of, you know, that bit of development, I suppose, for want of a better term, that he could maybe turn it to his advantage. But you know, these things are all ahead of us, um, so sure we don't know. John, this is one a punt out of, out of the out of the the back lane here. You mentioned Rahu Ibrahim earlier on leaving Kilmarnock. Were you surprised that we let him go? Uh, kinda. It just came out the blue. But he's obviously not good enough to play for Celtic, so it's good he's that we're pretty... It's kind of good that we've been ruthless just to get rid of the boy, and maybe mm-hmm. we'll prove it wrong at Kilmarnock and score a couple of goals against us at Rugby Park or something. Did we get any money for him, or was he a free transfer? Did we let him go exactly. for an there? I think we let him go for free. I. Uh, and I mean, the fairly decent pedigree he was Eindhoven, wasn't he? Before no, he went, he went for Sporting Lisbon to PSV and asked yes, to be released for PSV because he wasn't getting a game. He come to sell yeah. it and dance about with a couple of trophies and then go to Kamarna. <laughs> ah, but, but see the hang with, see the way, the hang with PSV it. Eindhoven, see in Holland once you become, what is it, 21? I think ah, it's once you reach a certain time. age with football or something, you need to be given. A certain amount of money in your wages, so I think well, that was part of the reason why he got punted for PSV. But when I, the way I read it, John, is that he asked PSV to release him. Uh, well, maybe I it was think both, that's true. But I definitely because read that about his yeah. wages. Lennon was saying at the time that it was great, you know, that his player, you know, he, he, he put his football before everything and he asked to go, you know, and that sort of stuff. And you're sort of saying, any time I saw him, I didn't think he had it. You know, I saw him a couple of times in reserve matches on uh, the Celtic website. There was last time was going. Guy just looks small, you know, pretty, pretty, tidy footballer, but he wouldn't have survived the Scottish game. So it'll be very interesting to see how he does at Kilmarnock. You know, if he's gone there, you know, will, will he get a step up? But I suppose, like everything else, time will tell. Time will tell. So, going to leave Juventus, and there was another we'll big event. before you leave Juventus as well, Sorry, actually. Sorry, Johnny. Chiellini's injured. He's going, to, he's probably going to miss the game at Parkhead, which is a That's huge a blow for him. Big boost. He's a big, yeah. he's a big butcher. Hmm. Yeah, big big boost for us if he's definitely if he's missing. Yeah, and I wonder will we get any other antics this time around? You know, any play acting and the time wasting and the time and that sort of stuff. Of course you will. So should we just steam in them, Scotty? Definitely. <laughs> to to be honest, I I mean we spoke about. It. I just think first of all, we we'll spoke about the effort about it. It's a it's a, it's a rubbish. It's a rubbish draw, right? It's a rubbish draw. It's hard to get to. It's no good, a great appeal for travel-wise. Their mm-hmm. fans are a bit dubious to be nice about them. And Juventus are a good, good side. Right? It's no, I mean, I, I, I know a load of people are going, oh, I think we'll do it, I think we'll do it. Right? Well, well, God bless you for being positive and stuff like that. But it's a hard, hard tie. But we're in it. We've got our dough in the pocket. Nobody's going to take that off us. Let's get wired in and see what it's all about. Johnny's made a, a good point. See, Kiellini missing. That's a big thing. And it was mm. it was the same as with Benfica. With hindsight, the draw set is up nicely to, to go in and beat Sparta. Thank goodness. But with them, you saw the difference that Luzio made to Benfica with the home and away games. So they're missing a big guy. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. The row didn't it? He's, First half yeah, third, then and elected him. Boom, boom, exactly. No, no, boom. Then and elected. There's your dinner. There's your dinner. Well, I have to say, I don't share your optimism in either, Johnny. I think we're going to get pumped, so I think we'll be pleasantly surprised if if Lennon does manage to fashion some sort of a result out of this. But uh, you'll be let, you want let's let's draw see. leg, didn't you? That's, that's What's it. You want to be in it for the second leg. You don't want it to be a formality. Mm, no. Okay, well, that, look, I'm gonna pu- I'm gonna pull the curtain in here. It was a good half an hour chat on on what's happening generally in, in terms of the football, but we're well, gonna move on to chat part. It took us fifty minutes. Is it fifty? <laughs> Jesus, 40, 40 odd, forty odd minutes. Uh, good chat where we are, but we're gonna move on, move ahead now to part two and talk about the league reconstruction. Okay, during the week, um, Doncaster, Regan, Ogilvy, and all those. Our souls got together and um, finally unveiled what the, the plans were for Scottish football, um, which was the the reconstruction of the of the top leagues. Um, I don't think there was any reference to the pyramid system that we had advocated before, um, but I just wanted to get your your um, general thoughts on the um, on the new system. So basically, um, the the top leagues going to split after so many matches. 
and there'll be a top eight and then a bottom eight comprising of the other f- four teams in the league and the top teams in, in Division 1. Scott, I get it. You know, I, I can see what they're trying to do with it, but a lot of people are moaning and groaning that they think it's it's too um, co- uh, convoluted, that it's, you know, badly thought out and even worse in, in terms of its presentation. What's your thoughts? Yeah, both, both sides. I, I, and you know what they're trying to do. They're trying to do something, but it is... I think it's convoluted. They're trying to make something entertaining for the sake of that. Somebody's come up with an idea that's never been done before. Let's 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 do this. But the split was crap, um, and I just think you're trying to shine a a jobby. You know what I mean? Um, the, there's a whole load of things in Scottish football that need changed before log, league reconstruction, in my opinion. Um, obviously, obviously, I can't be too critical of it because it's not happened yet, right? And mm. and I know that type of person who are just totally negative about something. And I like the idea that they're all getting together and trying to make the product better. But as a fan, I just think cut it back to basics and let's let's look at let's look at what's going wrong because we're going to have the same teams in the same day making the same problems and the same managers will get the same jobs and it would just be it would just be what we've got in a in a funny like person well, and you're, that's you're talking saying. there well, you're talking there as a general Scottish football fan, but in terms of a Celtic fan, we're gonna lose money. Mm-hmm. From this law well yep. confirmed um, that we're trickling down mm-hmm. um, money from, from what our wad would be um, to the other the other teams, and I heard some a, a figure something about the lower the lower teams were getting sixty grand, and they're now going to get three hundred and seventy five thousand. That's an enormous change in terms of the financial model, isn't it? Oh, aye, aye, and, and on one way, you've kind of got you've got to look at it, and uh, is it going to benefit the rest of the teams so they can challenge us, which ultimately will make us stronger. Right? If you look, if you look at it for that way, if these guys, however, look at the nick of these clubs, you know, look at the nick, and I just feel giving them mere money is just flinging money down a big hole. I mean, mm. see, see, be honest, see if these clubs, see if they, they, they pulled out a big route and went right. See if you're in, you're over in five million worth of debt, or you're spending X amount more than what you're bringing in. Do you know what? You're knowing this league. And and every team every team in it are well ran and and they've all got they've all what's that um that rule they put in a a trusted person. No, I mean see be honest, Gear Hearts on an extra three hundred grand isn't gonna do nothing. To be honest, I, I just feel like it's flinging money away. So who's all getting the extra three hundred grand? All the SPL teams and that's it? No, right down, right, right down under the lower league as well. There's a huge, there's a huge sort of landslide of, of money coming from the top, and Lawwell sort of admitted that that we would be the, I suppose, the ones that are gonna, um, that are gonna lose in but, terms of that. Right, well, man, you know, he's see, see magnanimous about it. You know, he was saying we're doing it for the good of Scottish exactly, football. Exactly, doing it for the good of Scottish football. But what is he changing to fill that stadium so that all these clubs can benefit? Because you see, the new we can't fill it, sell it back. As much as we'll, we'll always sell season tickets because we'll sell it fans and that's what we do, right? But you're not going to fill the ground and the floating supporters are not going to come back to it. So, I mean, see, say, say you had a season ticket last year and you went, I'm not going back. There's no huns this year. There's no big games. And then you've watched Celtic on the telly, or you've nipped to a couple of games. What's going to is a is a change of league going to make you go? Do you know what I'm going to a season ticket next year? I very much mm. doubt it. I don't think the changes Johnny. are geared towards ourselves. Of course, I know, Johnny. Of course, you know, I know. But but see, you mentioning talking about Lowell, he, like I don't the, the amount of money we are losing can't be that bad, and it might be getting compensated by the Magnus deal. Otherwise, Lowell wouldn't be letting it happen because he's an accountant. But he's doing all right. It's so political with him. You've got the zombies why to kill everybody and moan about everything and anything. And you've got Lawwell saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we're taking a hit in money so these guys can get more money, blah, 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 blah. He's trying to get everybody on side to try and make them all his puppets because the voting rights are going to be changing, aren't they? 
But he's yeah. not daft. He's doing after it. And he's just manipulating them all. He doesn't care about the couple of hundred thousand that we're going to be losing at this deal. You know mm. what I mean? And it's not going to affect you like whatsoever. Unless we finish uh, ninth the, or something. I, I, must con- I must confess, the best thing about the league re- reconstruction journey for me has been the reaction of the zombies. <laughs> it's been great. Well, they're the ones that wanted league reconstruction, didn't they? <laughs> they, they just thought it was going to be two leagues, that's all. But what was funny was that he was moaning that Charles Green was saying, this is our money they're giving away. And you're going like, you're in the fourth division. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you clown. Oh. What are you talking about? How are we giving away your money, you fucking arsehole? You know, but I just thought it was brilliant, the fact that, you know, that, he, that he said, and you had McCoy out saying, they're doing this halfway through the season. You're going, no, we're not. It doesn't start the next season. If you Their wanna, fans if you have wanna... been slapped out of the place. Their fans have been slapped again. Sure, you want to get the world record points total for a fourth division thing? What's what's you know what's keeping? <laughs> They'll get you the trophy for the fourth division. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the blue room is better. Sorry, sorry, I digress. But it's been great to see the reaction coming out of of uh, of the the of the hordes to see what you know. What they're losing, what they think they're losing, you know, they're they're absolutely they're absolutely mental. So is there anything either of two you want to add? Add to that, they're coming. Move on. Move on. Yeah, the best thing okay. about the league reconstruction is the removal of the ridiculous split. That's the best thing. Gonna, I think but about. It should be the ridiculous no. split. The ridiculous split. It's going to be there. Oh, but some, yeah, yeah we're playing. Yeah, we're, we're the tap eight. You'll play each team home and away, and then we put the tap eight. We'll play each other home and away. So we're oh. playing each team four times. No, the no, the the situation is you after the split you have one season with three home games, two away games. The next season with two home games and three away games. It's fucking ridiculous, man. Well, the other the other part of it that was ridiculous too is that you used to have you could have had the seventh position finishing above the six on points, Aye. but we're still stuck on seventh, and that was pathetic. Whereas this time, the uh, I think the second batch of of clubs that are returned to zero, so they all start from a flat position. Which is, to me makes sense. You know, I think that's pretty good. You know, that they're all going. To, it's it's almost like a new league starting up halfway through. Every team has a chance. You know, so Jackie McIlroy. If, if you finish yesterday. ninth in the SPL by, by goal difference, you end up getting relegated into the first division. I don't know if I'd be too happy about the the way that league's going to go, man. Ah, but you won't be because that's not that's not how it's going to work. But Jackie McNamara was making the same point the other day. He was saying that well, I could play my kids, and you're going to be pretty stupid to play your kids because if you're starting from a, a base of zero. You should be playing your, your best team and keep it tight. You know, presumably you've only got what you're halfway through the season, you're only gonna have eighteen matches. You know, so to me I think it's gonna be pretty competitive. I don't think there's a lot between the top four teams in the first division and the bottom four teams in the SPL. I think it's really much of a muchness. You know, who would you expect to be getting up into the top six for on a regular basis? It would be us Aberdeen, Hearts, you know maybe yeah. you know, Hibs, Hibs if they're if if they they don't implode. You know, so you're you're looking at the you know who the roughly who the, the bottom four clubs are going to be and who the, the top four clubs are going to be. I think it's a pretty pretty decent approach. I don't know. We'll see next season, but I'm not. I'm not. I think we need to change, and we'll see if it works. But I'm not overly concerned that we'll uh, convince that it's going to work either. But right. they needed to do something, so we'll see. And at the end of the day, they can always change it back of a cheat. <laughs> Scotland, after all. <laughs> right, let's draw this fast to a close. But I just wanted to mention very quickly from each of you, I just wanted to wee comment on the new deal stuck with Magners. Um, Scott, as a Cedar fan, are you happy? Hi. Hi. There you go. <laughs> That's, it. That's like asking, does a bear shit in the woods, Scott? Uh, well, I was going to say, as a Cedar, Wayne, beer, and tequila fan, are you happy? <laughs> well, I was never keen on tenant, so I, I, oh, it's just, <laughs> It's mere money in the club, isn't it? So I brought it, and, and, and it looks a wee bit better than Tennant's. Tennant's looks. Well, and the other point is too, it has broken with the with the zombies. You know, it's not a it's not a joint sponsorship deal. Does that make you? So is that is that a hundred percent then? Because I thought I thought they were came, they had an offer on the table. Have they they have an offer on the table, but it's different. It's not uh, whereas before the offer was equalised and we took joint sponsorship. It won't be like that. They are they have been offered less and have more or less said no. And they have also been offered a different brand in terms of sponsorship. It was uh, Black Cider rather than Magnus. So which is pretty the different. Well, yeah, <laughs> so the Huns or so the zombies. So uh, happy day. Johnny, what's your thoughts on the deal? Anything strike is interesting there? Just good that we've broke away for the Huns, even if it's not a hundred percent break away. We've kind of went separate. Although I'd like to see them with Magnus in their shirts. 
<laughs> Magnus Ari said, right? Uh, bro. Oh, Dundee but, had a board, didn't they? Didn't, didn't Magnus sponsor Dundee? Dundee was aye, aye. And I think they had the Irish bit on their on their uh, on their jersey too, which is which is interesting. Uh, okay. Was, no, I don't know. Sorry, leave sorry, Johnny, go ahead. No, I'll just leave it. I was going to get into the whole bit. There's different bits of Magnus, blah blah blah, but just cut that bit out, Scotty boy. Right? Nope. Do that tonight. Uh, no, I'll definitely leave that bit instead. Anyway, that's uh, just on another another um, interesting th- thing to note today as well. This the the evening actually is that Lennon's leaving the uh, the camp at Marbella to come back to the elite managers dinner. Uh, I suppose it's a bit of a bauble. It's not. It doesn't really mean anything in in, in reality. But Johnny, um, nice to see a Celtic manager being included in that company. Ah, you know, I think he says he gets his invite through the LMA. So did Ferguson? I don't know if Ferguson. He's chairing it, isn't he? So he he's hosting. He's, it. Yeah. Uh, so it's good that he's getting involved in these things. He's kind of getting to network. I just wonder if he'll take his tobacco with him and have a wee chew it <laughs> in between courses. Yeah, it's, it's good. For, it's good for us that he's gone, you know, because he'll probably learn some stuff after, like, San Marino, getting all people. I'd say, I'd say he'd be, uh, yeah. well, I'd say he'd be pretty nervous because he had mentioned that, you know, it's, it's a illustrious company that, that uh, he's going into. He's still a rookie manager and he reckons he'd be the youngest there, you know, or he says, if, if I'm not the youngest, I'll definitely the most, be the most inexperienced there. So, I suppose, Jesus, it's like singing in front of the Arantes, isn't it? He can do an auction for one yammer when he's done and see how much we can get for him. <laughs> he should be asking for good loan deals off Mourinho. Never mind. Scotty, any thoughts on the this big shindig? Nope. But he's not a game zone ESPN on Wednesday night. Yep. Tuesday oh, yeah, night. Tuesday night. Tuesday night, uh, night yeah. is it? I thought well, it was done, Johnny, you're, yeah, no, it's yeah. Tuesday. You're setting people to the wrong night. But yes, the, the game against Doyle Bucharest. And a big, big mention to Paul the Tim and the other guys who flew out this morning. I think the, the Malaga to go and watch the match. Fair play. That's... Uh, that's devotion for you, as the stock cube advert used to say. Okay. I don't know where these guys get their money for. It's the middle of January. Jeez, oh man. I want to get a job where these guys work that can afford to go out of these places. Jealousy Anyone. is an awful thing. Uh, it's an awful thing. <laughs> get on the Twitter and tell us how you can afford to go to Melbourne in the middle of January, you bams. Well, I'm refusing to speculate in case uh, Strathclyde police are listening, so I'll just I'll draw that, yeah, a, a close there. So, a couple of wee other things too. Um, as well, one other wee thing with a youth keeper, Glenn Daniels, who's gone out and loaned the party thistle, and I think Scott Fox, who used to be our um, reserve keeper as well, is there too. And here, Paul Slain, Paul Slain's a party thistle. Jesus, do you remember right. a couple of years ago we signed him for the for the youth team, and it was all all guns blazing, and he was the best thing to slice bread and stuff. Jesus, that's some fall for him. Apparently, he's not doing too well there either. He doesn't get a game for thistle. Strange. Yeah, I actually mate. watched. They played a game on it was on BBC Alba, and I actually watched it. Went from it came on, it came on the second half, and it was pretty rotten. Was he? So I don't yeah. think he'll last longer, much longer at Celtic. Yeah, he'll be another one to release. It's very, it's very strange because he, he the, the whole fan for about him was that he had the ability to do it, and yeah. you to see somebody going like that is. Uh, it's too wide, isn't it? Ah oh, well, he won't be the first. He won't be the last. No. No, he definitely won't. He definitely won't. Okay, folks, anything else you want to add? Nope. nope. Happy days. I'll go for a beer. This has been the temporary stand. You guys have been great. Thanks very much and good night. Cheers, Marty. See you later. There you are. You made it all the way to the end. Well done. It's your intention to start pumping out a few more of these this year. We've a couple of specials lined up and we'll push ahead with that as well but we'll be getting back to our usual Sunday night slot, so hope you enjoy them. We still have to return the welcome meetings by the TikTok car look, Shamrock guys, and we'll be doing that crossover as soon as it suits everyone. Any ideas, suggestions, they're always welcome, and can be directed with any feedback, good or bad, to the usual at Tempristan on Twitter. You can email us at Tempristan at HailHailMedia.com and you can get us on the usual message boards. Before I leave you, as you may or you may not know, a few of the Tempest Stand regulars are very much involved with amateur football scoring, and it's with that we would like to wish our sincerest condolences to the friends, family, teammates, opponents, whoever was affected by the sad death of the Garden Cosp FC player Adam Bain, who passed away on Sunday morning after a clash of heads while playing on Saturday afternoon. 
We all love our football, but I tell you, Shankland and Ryan is definitely not more life or death. So, Smith, that it's good night and God bless. Hail, hail. <laughs>